Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at the Lockdown Carlotta. We're all feeling a little bit bored and not knowing exactly what to do, but those that are particularly affected are baseball fans, because here we are, springtime, which is baseball season, a beautiful day, and you would love to be either watching baseball on television or at the ballpark. But unfortunately, can't, that can't be, so I'm going to try and fill in by telling you a baseball story. Now, this baseball story was originally published on June the 5th of the year 1888. And of course, in those days, baseball was the national support, so it got a lot of attention. Uh, it was written by Ernest Thayer, and I'm about to recite to you Casey at the bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood 4-2 to two with but one inning left to play. So when Cooney lied on second and Burroughs did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest with the hope that springs eternal within the human breast. For they thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, and likewise so did Blake. The former was a puttin', the latter was a fake. So on that struck at multitude, a death-like silence sat, because there seemed little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single, to the wonderment of all, and the much despised Casey tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and they saw what had occurred, there was Blakey safe on second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from the glad multitude rose up a joyous yell. It rumbled in the mountain tops, it rattled in the dell. It hit upon the hillside and rebounded in the flat for Casey, mighty Casey was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And then responding to the crowd, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt was Casey at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands in dirt. 5,000 tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt. And as the New York pitcher drowned the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air, but Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people went up a board muffled roar, like the beating of a storm wave on some far and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, someone shouted from the stands, and they probably would have killed him if not Casey raised a hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's disage show. He stilled the rising tumult, he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew, but Casey still ignored it, and the umpire called, strike two. Fraud, cried the Madden thousands, and the echo answered fraud, but one look from Casey and the audience was awed. The sneer was gone from Casey's lips, they saw his muscles strain, and they knew that mighty Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. And now the pitcher has the ball, 
and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Ah, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. Somewhere men are merry, and somewhere hearts are light. Somewhere bands are playing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. <laughs>